What is this? A lion and tiger? Who play like a pair of kittens? Well, they are just the cutest thing ever. And of course, best animal friends. Since Cam the lion and Zabu the white tiger grew up together, they are so close. They know just how to help each other. And to make each other feel happy. And safe. And strong. And loved. Life wasn't always this good for Cam the lion and Zabu the white tiger. From the time they were cubs, they lived at a small zoo and spent most of their time living in tiny cages, until one day, help arrived to take them to a very special place, an animal sanctuary, where they were finally free to run, and strut, and just kind of roll around in the grass. So even though it's a little unusual for a lion to love a tiger, this much, and for a tiger to love a lion with all of her big kitty heart, these two don't care one bit. They just want to hang out with their best friend and show off by stalking their own tails or playing with a very big ball. Zabu loves her big red ball almost as much as going for a swim in her very own tiger pond. Zabu's like, come on in, Cam. This water is the best. I'm actually good. I'm going to stay here and scratch. You do you. Cam and Zabu have their whole lives to be free and happy together, to play hunt, and chase, and scratch, to be on the go, or to lie back, and to play the occasional game of ring toss. But mostly, Cam just likes to show Zabu just how much he loves her. And Zabu feels the same way. They've been through a lot together. So no matter what, this lion and white tiger will always be best animal friends. Chance does not like to let Sammy onto the bed. And it's not even his bed. It's a dog bed. But Sammy doesn't seem to mind. He loves that little goat. Even when Chance tries to sneak in a headbutt. I guess that's what makes them best animal friends. Meet Chance. He's a little goat who lives at a rescue farm, a place where people take care of animals who need extra help. Chance needs help walking. He was only six days old when he came here. Everyone was so ready to love Chance and to make him part of the big farm family. All the animals were really excited. They all wanted to say hi, but Chance was so little and kind of nervous. Then Chance met Sammy, and they had an instant connection. They both knew it was the start of something special. 
Sammy became Chance's big dog protector. He helped Chance feel confident and bold. Chance loves feeling bold. Hey Sammy, come on in. You can teach me how to doggy paddle. Soon he was feeling even bolder than Sammy, who is so patient and gentle and gets really sleepy. Every day, the people at the farm work hard to help Chance move a little better. They even gave him a special goat moving cart. Of course, his buddy Sammy is there to help too. To get Chance stronger, they have to practice a lot. But when they're done, everybody gets to watch TV and drink milk from a goat bottle or hang out while Chance gets to drink milk from a goat bottle. <coughs> Sammy's friends with other animals on the farm too. And sure, it's fun to hang out and eat grass with a pig or a cow, but no one is as special to him as Chance. Because even though Sammy is Chance's helper and big dog protector, Chance looks out for Sammy too. Like the time he helped him search for his missing bone. Or when he gave Sammy advice on a new outfit. And when Sammy is nervous about trying something new, Chance always gives him a little nudge. They've got each other's backs and have a bond that can never be broken. Chance and Sammy are forever and always best animal friends. Are you ready for this? Tuka might be a cat, but he thinks he's a dog. He plays like a dog, sleeps like a dog, and even eats like a dog. So why does Tuka act like a dog? Well, maybe it's because his best friend is a dog. A big, cuddly dog named Brady. And when you spend every second with someone you love, sometimes you can't help but copy them. These two are definitely best animal friends. This is the story of Tuca and Brady. When Tuca was a teeny tiny kitten, he was all alone. But these nice ladies saw him, rescued him, and gave him a home. They could tell Tuca was something special. He had these big eyes that said, I'll always love you. I might destroy your window blinds and get stuck in odd places, but I'll always love you. Okay, are you ready for something weird? When Tuca first came home, Brady the dog fell in love. And he decided to take care of Tuca like he was his own puppy. Ever since, Tuca has been a part of Brady's dog pack. A pack of two. Brady teaches Tuca everything he needs to know about being a dog. Like how to play fight. And how to bury your face in furniture. Brady's like, if you put your head under a pillow, they can't find you to give you a bath. Like this, Brady? I can't see you, so I don't know. And how to relax like a dog. Psst, Brady, am I doing it right? <coughs> but even though Tuca is a dog in training, he's not exactly like Brady. Because Tuca is very brave. He likes to climb way up high and explore wild and mysterious places. This one time, 
Tuca got stuck in a cabinet. Um, hello? Brady? Mom? Little help? Brady, on the other hand, is kind of afraid of loud noises, <coughs> vacuum cleaners, <coughs> bicycles, <coughs> you name it. He's a bit of a scaredy dog. Aw, poor Brady. But no matter how scared Brady gets, Tuca is always there to make him feel safe. Because Tuca's learned something extra special from his favorite dog, Brady. How to make someone feel happy by being so weird, nuzzling heads, or even just sitting quietly by your friend. Tuca and Brady are best animal friends. And they always will be. Billow the cat is best friends with a monkey. Um, what? A cat who is friends with a monkey. And not just any monkey. A bouncy baby monkey named Avni. Billow and Avni love each other. They explore outside together and play up high together and snuggle in boxes together. They never want to be apart. They're kind of obsessed with each other and definitely best animal friends. Avni is a little different from other monkeys. She only has one arm. So sometimes she needs some extra help, especially when she was little. <coughs> Luckily, Avni lives in an animal orphanage where people love her and give her lots of help. But the people can't be around Avni all the time. There are other animals to take care of too. <coughs> Avni really needed someone who would always be by her side. And Billow came to the rescue. Billow loved Avni right away. And Avni loved Billow right back. Before long, she started thinking of Billow kind of like a mom. A mom with pointy ears and long whiskers. Now they do everything together. Billow helps Avni go exploring. Up ladders, Across the roof, everywhere. Ooh, look at him go. Okay, I see you. Hey, what are you doing over there? And Avni helps Billow stay clean by making sure she has nothing in her fur. Billow, you really gotta take more showers. I can't believe what I'm seeing here. They're a perfect match. Billow helped teach little Avni how to feel strong and confident. Now, Avni has no problem hanging out with these puppies. We're jumping on this sheep. Hey, Billow, what do you think of that? <coughs> Thanks to Billow, Avni feels brave enough to go off on her own. Sometimes she'll even leave the orphanage. But Avni never stays away from Billow for too long. Because Billow is her family. And because they love each other. And because who's going to clean Billow's fur if Avni doesn't do it? Seriously, Billow? I'll buy you a bar of soap. Just kidding. Avni and Billow are best animal friends. And they always will be. Get the cat. <laughs> She's so fluffy. He's happy. He likes to lick my teeth. That's what he's trying to do right now. Bernie loves Galaxy. <laughs> because Galaxy like takes care of him like a mom would. I think that it's cool that Galaxy like lets Bernie lay on her like that. Best animal friends. Bernie is my first rat. 
Fun fact, Bernie will eat anything. He <laughs> eats my flip flops. Yes. <laughs> She always has liked being the very center of attention. I think that Bernie and Galaxy are definitely best friends. I can tell that Bernie really looks up to Galaxy because of the way he follows her around. We were worried that they wouldn't get along at first. Galaxy was very curious. Bernie was sort of nervous. I could tell he wanted to hang out with her. I was the one who like really wanted them to bond. What I did once, you weren't home. And I put <laughs> Bernie in a box with Galaxy. That probably helped him bond. <laughs> Since Bernie was a baby and Galaxy at that time was old enough to be like a mom, she ended up really liking him, we think because Bernie was like her baby. Galaxy will be lying on her side. Bernie will run up to her, around her a few times, run over her. Then Galaxy will swat him, or like gently bite him on the back, but not in a mean way, like in a play fighting way. Galaxy will wrap on their two front paws and sort of like hug him, not like in a huggy way, but in a play way. Bernie will only like run away, sit under the couch, and then he'll run back out of her again. Sometimes Galaxy will get scared of Bernie, and I'm like, isn't it supposed to be the other way around? <laughs> Bernie and Galaxy are very good friends because I think they're quite similar in many ways. Galaxy is really loving and she'll like come up to you and cuddle with you. Bernie's very loving and calm. Sometimes Galaxy will grab him and like sort of bathe him. And then sometimes Bernie will just sort of like lay on her and it's really cute. He likes to groom her ears and head. Watching them play or snuggle or, or groom each other just makes me feel happy inside. They really care about each other. It's really cute when they're like sitting next to each other asleep. I've noticed that Galaxy has definitely like taught Bernie to like eat flowers. And that Bernie has taught Galaxy how to eat human food. I'd say Bernie and Galaxy think of each other in a way where they feel like they're family. I think that Bernie and Galaxy are definitely best friends. If a rat and a cat can be friends, can't anyone be friends? over bubbles? And did bubbles just boop noses with Seamus? These two animals trust and love each other. They're definitely best animal friends. Meet Seamus the lamb and Bubbles the pig. These two do everything together. Seamus was born blind, so sometimes he needs help from his friend Bubbles. She loves spending time with her favorite fuzzy lamb. Before he met Bubbles, Seamus had never met a pig or heard little piggy sounds. But from the first day they met, Bubbles helped Seamus find tasty snacks he couldn't see. Bubbles snorts to show Seamus the way. Bubbles is like, this way, Seamus. And Seamus is like, coming, Bubbles! Seamus knows he can trust Bubbles no matter what. Sure, they both have other friends on the farm. But it isn't quite the same. Bubbles and Seamus were both rescued as babies. Poor little Bubbles was found on the highway. She was so tiny. But someone saw her, 
scooped her up, and rescued her. Oops! Careful, baby bubbles. She was so happy to be found. They wrapped her up like a little burrito and took her to the vet. The vet said Bubbles was hurt and needed time to heal and get strong again. She's so fast now. So she ate and ate and slept. Then she attacked a blanket. Oh yeah, get it, Bubbles! <laughs> Seamus was rescued when he was a baby, too. He was born on a sheep farm, but he was blind. So he needed lots of chin rubs and lap naps and extra love and attention. A volunteer took him home. And that's where he met Bubbles, his best friend. Every day is a new adventure for these two. Hey, where are you guys going now? They say hi to the pigs, hop around, tag, you're it, Bubbles, I'm gonna get you. And if Seamus needs something, Bubbles always comes running. It's okay, Seamus, I'm here. <laughs> These two really are best animal friends. Smudge sees her around the corner, and he's like, I'm gonna pounce on the bunny. That's what cats do. But then he kisses her. It surprises Missy every time. She loves it. These two are definitely best animal friends. This is Smudge. He loves doing normal cat things, like playing with toys, doing crazy cat flips, and turning himself into a blanket burrito. But Smudge isn't totally normal. There's one thing about him that's very funny. His best friend is a bunny! A beautiful and bossy bunny named Missy. They're like two peas in a pod. Or shoes and socks. Or cat food and carrots. And even though they spend just about every moment together, they never get mad or fight. Oh wait, except for the times when they get mad and fight. But they usually aren't mad for long. They love each other too much for that. Even though they're best friends, these two are pretty different. Missy is a sassy bunny, so she always wants everything to be her way. If she doesn't like a toy, she'll tell you. She likes her space to be nice and tidy. If you leave a paper towel on her bed, she will eat it. When she thumps her back legs, she is letting you know she's annoyed. And sometimes, if she's feeling really sassy, she'll let out a little bunny shriek. <laughs> Smudge, on the other hand, is more laid back. He likes to lounge around, licking and grooming his friends and showing everybody how much he loves them. Maybe they're best friends because Missy always wants to be the center of attention. And Smudge loves giving Missy all the attention. He gives Missy kisses whenever she wants. Smudge and Missy like playing games together, too. Sometimes Smudge will hide and Missy will find him. Smudge is really good at hiding. Other times Missy will hide and Smudge will find her. Missy isn't very good at hiding. And whenever Smudge finds Missy, he gives her another cat bath. Smudge is proud to take care of his friend. Because when Smudge was a tiny baby kitten, he didn't have anyone to take care of him. He was found all by himself, but a nice lady took him home. Smudge was so happy to have a family. They gave him lots of love and played with him all the time and gave him soft blankets to make him feel safe and cozy at night when he curled up to sleep. And as he dreamed, he would lick the cozy blankets and rub them with his little paw. One day, Missy came to live with them too. 
Some bunnies would be afraid of a big cat like Smudge, but Missy was different. She was curious and brave. She didn't waste a second hopping over to Smudge. And from the moment they met, Smudge made her feel right at home. And even though Missy is a little sassy, they quickly became best animal friends. This is Oscar the dog. And here's his little baby, Zan. Wait, 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 wait. A dog who's dad to a pig? How'd that happen? Well, Zan might not look like a puppy, but her dog dad will always take care of her. These two are best animal friends. Oscar is a big dog with a big heart. One day, Oscar's mom brought home a surprise. It was a furry little black piglet. That was Zan. Zan was just a tiny baby. And she needed someone to take care of her. As soon as Oscar saw her, he could tell she needed a family. So his big doggy heart grew even bigger. And he was like, me, I'll help. I can be her family, I'll do it. From that moment on, Oscar was the big dog dad and Zan was his little pig baby. Oscar took such good care of her and taught her all the things a puppy, excuse me, piglet needs to know like how to lick food off a spoon. Mm, mm, mm. And where to find the best toys. And give the biggest hugs. He also taught Zan how to run around outside and run and run and run until they were all tired out. Oh, maybe not. Oscar, wake up. Oscar, wake up. Oscar, wake up. Hey, get up. I'm not done playing. And Oscar always made sure Zan stayed safe. Hey, not over there, little buddy. You'll get lost. And then something pretty cool happened. Zan started to grow up. But she didn't just grow. She grew huge. Uh, Zan, you're bigger than me. <laughs> now that Zan is bigger, they're not just a dog daddy and a pig baby. They're also a dog best friend and a pig best friend. They still love each other just as much. And they still do everything together. And Oscar still looks out for her. Ooh, Zan, you are looking dirty. Let me give you a bath. But not everything is the same. Because now that Zan is gigantic, they can do all sorts of new extra things. Like go on walks away from home. And go swimming. And uh, sing songs together. <gasps> Would we call that singing? Mm, maybe. But no matter how things change, Zan will always love Oscar. And Oscar will always love Zan. Because he knows the bigger she gets, the more there is to love. And she'll always be his baby, no matter what. These two buds are best friends. Bucket is a little cow, and Colton is a very big dog. 
but they love each other. I'd say Colton loves Bucket more than bones. And balls. And a good pat on the head. And he loves all those things. And Bucket loves Colton more than sitting in the grass on a green spring day. Which is his favorite thing to do. Look at these two. They are best animal friends. These two love to play chase. They chase each other every single day. Sometimes Colton chases Bucket, and sometimes Bucket chases Colton. It really doesn't matter who's chasing who. They never get tired of being best friends. A thing about these best animal friends that's maybe a little weird, they like to nibble on each other's ears. It's true. It's their weird and special thing they do. It's how they say, I'm happy to be near you. It's how they say, I'll always want to play chase with you. If you have a best friend, please do not nibble on their ear. I am serious about that. But with these two, Nibbling on ears is part of what makes them best animal friends. Before Colton knew Bucket, he lived with his mom, Susan. They were a family, but something was missing. Susan wanted to bring home someone who needed a dog and a person to love them. She went to the market and met Bucket. Bucket was tiny then. Very, very tiny. He was just a baby, and he was all alone. So Susan took him home. She loved Bucket right away. At first, Colton and Bucket lived on different sides of a fence. But one day, they put their noses together and decided that's how they wanted to stay. After that, they were always together, on the same side of a fence. Colton would go for a walk, and Bucket would follow. Bucket would lay down, and Colton would sit down next to him. And of course, they played chase. Bucket played like a puppy, and Colton did too. They knew just what to do to make each other feel happy. It was like they'd known each other forever. They were best animal friends. And they always will be. Dora the cat's favorite food is... Hay? What? Well, I guess that makes sense if you're a cat who loves hanging out with a sheep. This way, Charlie. Right behind you, Dora. Whether it's snuggling warm and close or giving lamb kitty kisses, these two just want to be together. They are definitely best animal friends. Charlie and Dora were both rescued by the same family. Dora lived there first. Her new family found her when she was just a tiny kitten. She fit right in. Dora was a curious little cat. Hey, what's up there? What is this? What is that? And when Charlie arrived, Dora was very curious about her new brother. Hey there, Charlie. I'm Dora. Welcome home. At first, baby Charlie was a little bit sick and needed some help. So Dora became Charlie's caretaker, always watching over him, keeping him nice and clean, and never leaving his side. With all the love and attention, it wasn't long before Charlie started feeling good. And soon he was strong enough to act like himself, a playful baby lamb who loves his sister Dora. Now these two just kind of hang out. All the time. They march around the house 
and visit their friends on the farm, get into box trouble, and eat. Ooh, how's the hay, Charlie? Not bad. After a while, Charlie got too big to live in the house. So he moved outside with all the other sheep. At first, Dora was so sad. She was like, why can't you always live right next to me? But soon, Dora realized that Charlie was just a short walk down to the barnyard and that nothing would keep these friends from being together. Charlie visits the house, too. Hey, Dora, open up. Oh, Dora, I like what you've done with the place. And it's just like old times. Because nothing can change how much they love each other. They are best animal friends forever. Thomas the Duck spends every moment making sure Edna is okay. He's her guard duck. He protects her from animals who try to steal a bite of her breakfast. And that's about it. Because Edna doesn't actually need protecting. But she lets Thomas be her guard deck anyway. She likes having him around. And she especially likes it when he sleeps on her head. These two buds are definitely best animal friends. A good way to describe Thomas is loud. Like, really loud. He quacks all the time. He's always very busy quacking. Quacking when someone gets too close to Edna. And chasing and quacking at anybody who even thinks about stealing a bite of Edna's breakfast. He's the kind of duck who likes it when you follow the rules. And he quacks to let you know if you're stepping out of line. Even though Thomas means well, some of the other animals find him kind of annoying. Except Edna the pig. Edna doesn't mind Thomas's quacking, which literally never stops. Edna is a very calm, quiet, and patient pig. And she's gotten used to Thomas. And with Thomas doing all the talking and worrying, it means that she doesn't have to. So she's free to kick back and relax in peace wherever she wants. To lay in the grass and munch on watermelon. Or if there's no watermelon around, to lay in the grass and daydream about munching on watermelon. And if there's any trouble, she knows that Thomas will quack at it until it goes away. Maybe Edna doesn't even notice Thomas is quacking. To Edna, maybe his quacking is like the sound of wind in the trees. Something you always hear but don't really hear. But she definitely notices Thomas. She loves him. Especially when he cleans her hair and skin with his beak. That's her favorite part of the day. Thomas and Edna do everything together. Wherever Edna goes, Thomas goes too. He follows her around the garden. When Edna goes to the pond, Thomas goes to the pond. When she sits by a tree, he sits by a tree. And when she puts her head in a bucket, Thomas is right there too. They spend their whole lives together, just hanging out. And in the evening, when all the other ducks on the farm go off together to sleep, Thomas will follow Edna over to her hay pile where he'll nestle on top of her head. And they'll stay that way all night. And in the morning, before anyone wakes up, you can hear them talking to each other. Until breakfast is served, when they don't do very much talking. Before Thomas knew Edna, he tried to be friends with the other pigs. He loves pigs, but the pigs on the farm were kind of confused by Thomas. They didn't understand why he would follow them, quacking and trying to groom their tails. And Thomas was really loud. They tried to be friends with Thomas, but the pigs didn't want to hang out with a duck that quacked all the time. 
but Edna let Thomas hang out with her. And she let him copy all the things she did. And even though it was a little loud at first, having Thomas next to her was worth it. Because he made her so happy. They were best animal friends. And they always will be. Uh-oh, a dog and a cat. Are they gonna get along? I can't watch. Wait a minute. It looks like these two might actually be friends. And also wrestling buddies. They are best animal friends. This big happy dog is named Beatrix. And this bouncy little cat is called Midge. Ever since the day they met, these two have just wanted to play non-stop. Sometimes they play nicely and quietly. But most of the time, they do not. They wrestle and jump on each other and do whatever this is and whatever that is and make so much noise. These two are always together, playing and wrestling and cuddling too. So how'd they meet? Well, Midge's mom never thought she'd get a cat. But when she met Midge, she knew that little girl was something special and decided to keep her. Maybe it's because Midge is more like a ninja than a cat. Hiya! Somehow Beatrix doesn't seem to mind, even when Midge tries to eat her fur for breakfast. Midge loves to swat her little paws at Bee. And sneak attack from under the furniture. Watch out, Bee! Hiya! You'd think that Beatrix would be annoyed by Midge. But she loves her. They hate to be apart. When Beatrix goes outside for a walk, Midge can't stand it. Midge will be like, let me out, I gotta find B. And then Midge will even try to wrestle with the window, but it's just not the same. Then, as soon as Beatrix is back, it's wrestle time again. And even when things get really crazy, they never scratch or bite. They trust each other completely. When they've had enough, they just stop. And then, it's snuggle time. So many snuggles. These two like each other so much. Sometimes they just have a crazy way of showing it. And yes, one of them might be a ninja. Hiya! Either way, these two are going to be best friends forever. Best animal friends. Wallace likes to take his little guinea pig nose and shove it in Charlotte's fur. And she doesn't even mind. Sometimes Charlotte will steal Wallace's carrot while he's eating it. And he lets her. He's like, it's okay, Charlotte. You can have my carrot because I like you that much. Wallace doesn't have fur, so when he gets cold, Charlotte will sit next to him and warm him up. These two are definitely best animal friends. Wallace the guinea pig is grumpy. That's just the way he is. He does not like coming out of his house. He does not like being picked up. He does like wearing an old sock as a sweater, but that's about it. And do not tell him how cute he looks in his sock sweater because he does not like that. When guinea pigs are unhappy, annoyed, or mad, they make a sound. A grumpy guinea pig sound. Wallace makes the grumpy guinea pig sound a lot. By now you've probably guessed that grumpy Wallace likes to spend most of his time by himself. 
but he does have one very good friend, Charlotte the dog. Wallace does not like anybody else, not even the lady who takes care of him and loves him to pieces. Well, maybe he likes her a little bit, but not as much as he likes Charlotte. He loves Charlotte. Why? Nobody knows for sure. Maybe it's because Charlotte lets Wallace sit on her massive dog bed. Or maybe it's because Charlotte protects Wallace from the squirrels who live in the backyard. You get that squirrel. Or maybe it's because Charlotte will take her big furry dog body and snuggle right up to Wallace, even if he hasn't done anything nice to deserve it. Maybe it's because Charlotte lets Wallace sit on her head. Or maybe it's because Charlotte loves Wallace just as much as Wallace loves Charlotte. Whatever the reason, Wallace is definitely not grumpy when he's with Charlotte. When he's with her, he'll run around the whole house. And he'll do something that guinea pigs only do when they are so happy. He'll jump straight up in the air. A happy guinea pig pounce. When they're together, you can tell that Charlotte's happy too. For one, she always greets Wallace the moment he wakes up. And she likes to sniff all over him to make sure he's okay. When they play, she'll get down so low that their heads almost touch. Then she'll wag and wag and wag. Before Wallace knew Charlotte, he didn't have any friends. He had no idea what it was even like to have a friend. The lady who takes care of him tried to find him a friend. She introduced him to another perfectly nice guinea pig, but they didn't get along. Wallace was just too grumpy. He wanted to be alone in his house, wearing old sock sweaters and making grumpy guinea pig sounds at everybody. In a way, Wallace was happy being grumpy. But something was missing, even if he didn't know it. Everything changed when he met Charlotte. She loved Wallace right away. And Wallace did his first ever guinea pig pounce. Wallace and Charlotte are definitely best animal friends. Charlie the hippo can be a little slow. He loves taking his time when it comes to eating, waddling around, and sleeping. He may not move very fast, but he's quick to make new friends. But Makozi the rhino is fast. She loves to run and jump and has so much energy. They might seem different, but these two always find ways to be together. See how happy they are? That's how you know they're best animal friends. Charlie is a little baby hippo. In the wild, hippos love to swim. But Charlie's story is different. He was born during a drought, so there was no water anywhere. He needed a lot of help when he first came to the orphanage. There were no other hippos around, so no one could teach Charlie how to swim like a hippo or act like a hippo. Makozi the rhinoceros was born during a drought too, but she was lucky. When she came to the orphanage, she had other rhinos to play with. The people who took care of Charlie loved him so much and they wanted him to feel safe and make friends with other animals. So they introduced Charlie to Makozi, and right away, they became friends. Charlie would play and eat and explore with Makozi and the other rhinos. Who didn't mind that he was a hippo? And Charlie didn't care that he wasn't a rhinoceros. He did everything the rhinos did, and he loved his new friends. 
But Makozi was his best friend of all. Charlie loves giving Makozi kisses, no matter where they are. Mwah, mwah, mwah. With Makozi's help, Charlie learned how to be a rhinoceros. A rhinoceros hippopotamus. Or maybe a hippopotamus rhinoceros? Eh, whatever it was, Charlie was happy. So happy that he invited Makozi to do something really special. Take a nap with him. Now Charlie and Makozi are both expert nappers. Charlie will think to himself, it's time to sleep. And then he's like, Makozi, let's snuggle. And Makozi's like, if you say so. They cuddle as close together as possible. As he grew up, Charlie acted less and less like a hippo. He spent so much time with Makozi and the rhinos, he started to think he actually was a rhino. Even though hippos are supposed to love the water, Charlie didn't like to swim. Ah, the hose is enough for me, he said, acting just like a rhino. But the people who took care of Charlie knew that healthy hippos need to swim a lot. So they found a friend who could teach him how. They introduced Charlie to Moomin, a new hippo who came to stay at the orphanage. At first, Charlie wasn't sure about Moomin. You don't look like a rhino, he thought. Moomin thought Charlie was a little weird, too. You look like a hippo, but you don't act like one. Moomin would say, hey, Charlie, it's time for a swim. And Charlie would say, no thanks. Maybe we could take a nap instead. But as Charlie and Moomin spent more time together, they learned to trust each other. Moomin showed Charlie that swimming is the best. And now Charlie loves to swim, especially with his new friend Moomin. Moomin helps Charlie be the healthiest hippo he can be. And Charlie shows Moomin a thing or two about being a rhinoceros. Or should I say, a hippopotamus rhinoceros. Even though they have so many friends now, Charlie and Makosi still have best friend time together. Giving each other kisses. And of course, taking naps. They're best animal friends. And they always will be. Waffles always make up the weirdest games, like hop around the yard. And their favorite activity, try to jump over my head. Watch out, Waffles, June's coming for you. They like to wrestle and poop their little paws. But whatever they do, they do it together. They're always together because they're best animal friends. Meet Waffles the dog and her best friend, June the raccoon. June was just a tiny baby when she fell out of a big oak tree. Luckily, she landed in a nice soft yard. Her new mom found her and took great care of her. June grew quickly. And soon, she was the boss of the house. She could swim and watch TV whenever she wanted. But even though she was strong, healthy, and had plenty to do, something was missing. That's where Waffles comes in. This loving dog joined the family and made sure that June would never be lonely. They were friends from the minute they met. And soon they were sharing everything. June likes to make sure that her best friend is always close by. And Waffles does the same. And no matter what kind of situation June finds herself in, 
Waffles is always there to make sure everything is A-OK. -okay. And it's not always easy to keep up with such an active best friend. She's always getting into and out of all sorts of stuff. June, you're in a trash can. And after all that, June loves to get a cool drink and snuggle in for a nice relaxing ride in the car. And when she gets home, Waffles always rushes to meet her. Then it's back on the couch for these two best friends. Whenever June decides she wants some alone time, Waffles is there to make sure she gets it. Waffles is a great guard dog. Good girl, Waffles. June always thanks her best friend with a great big kiss. And whether they're just hanging out at home, trying out some new kicks, or hitting the road for their next adventure, Waffles and June always have the time of their lives together. They're best animal friends. And they always will be. Mbuzi will jump on a tire, and then Kula will run around and around and around him. Sometimes, Mbuzi will climb on Kula and just lie down on his body. And sometimes, Mbuzi will sneak up and nudge Kula right in the butt. Then they'll chase each other back and forth and back again across the yard. You can tell they're best friends. Just look at them. They make each other so happy. They are best animal friends. This is the story of Kula and Mbuzi. Mbuzi is a goat, and Kula's a baby rhino. They live here, at an animal orphanage, a place where people help baby animals who need someone to take care of them. Everybody at the orphanage, rhinos, zebras, hippos, people, live together as one big family. So Mbuzi and Kula are best friends and brothers. But before they were friends, Kula needed a lot of help. He came to the orphanage when he was only two days old. He was so little, and he missed his rhino family. But everyone at the orphanage helped him feel safe and sound and happy. They pet him and rubbed his back. They fed him milk out of a bottle made just for a baby rhino. And at night, they would lay their mats next to him and sleep. Sometimes they would even let little Kula sleep on top of them. The baby rhino was so small, he could fit on their chests, sort of. Kula loved the people at the orphanage and they loved him. But Kula still missed being with rhinos. There were others around, but they were older and bigger. Kula wanted to spend time with them doing rhino things, like eating grass and knocking their heads together and rolling in dirt. But these rhinos were so big and so strong, and Kula was still so little. If they played together, Kula could get hurt. So even though Kula had a big family with lots of people and animals to love him, Kula still felt alone, until he met Mbuzi. Mbuzi may be small, but he's a tough little goat, strong enough to bump around all day with a baby rhino. Everyone thought Mbuzi would be a perfect friend for Kula. But at first, they didn't really know each other. And I guess they were a little shy. If Mbuzi looked at Kula, Kula would look away. And if Kula looked at Mbuzi, Mbuzi would pretend not to notice. Nobody is sure exactly when it happened or exactly how it happened. But one day, Mbuzi and Kula started doing this. 
And the next thing you knew, they were friends. Best friends. Now they can't stand to be away from each other. If Kula gets a bath, Mbuzi will go crazy unless he's there too. Wherever Kula goes, Mbuzi goes. And Kula never feels alone anymore. Mbuzi has helped Kula grow bigger because he taught him how to eat grass. Now Kula is a lot stronger than he was. He can even hang out with the older rhinos without getting hurt. If he wanted to, he could spend all day with the older rhinos now, but he'd rather be with Mbuzi because he's happiest when they're together. And he wouldn't know what to do if they were apart. Kula and Mbuzi are best animal friends. If you want to see the cutest thing ever, just take a look at these two. One is a dog, one is a cat, but they kind of look alike, don't they? They love to snuggle up together and even dress up together. They're basically just the world's softest cuddle puddle. And oh yeah, best animal friends. From the day they met, Bubba the dog just wanted to give kisses to little Roo. And little Roo just wanted to snuggle him right back. It was so cute. Bubba would make sure Roo didn't fall into his water bowl, which is so big that it could be a swimming pool for kittens. He would cuddle with her during the daytime and tuck her into bed at night. Good night, Bubba. Good night, Roo. Then in the morning, they'd snuggle all over again. And as Roo grew up, some of the snuggling turned into play. And wrestling. And running around in circles. Okay, this is making me dizzy. Now they play hide and seek, and Bubba will be like, Ready or not, here I come, Roo. Found ya. Ooh, hey, I have another idea. Let's play ball. Sometimes they go outside for a walk. You know, to see the sights and smell the smells. They even spend holidays together, like the 4th of July. And Halloween. And of course, they are always the guest of honor at each other's birthday parties. Happy birthday to Baba. Happy birthday, dear Bubba. Happy birthday to you. Bubba and Roo are so famously cute, they even got in the newspaper. Celebrity sighting. But that's not what makes their friendship so special. What's special is how they treat each other. With so much kindness. and so many snuggles, and endless playtime, and just being there for each other. Bubba and Roo, best animal friends forever. Moki might look super tough, but she's so sweet. She loves everybody. But her best friends are not just one, but two guinea pigs, Pandora and Frida. I know, crazy, right? Wait until you see how these three fur balls became best animal friends. Moki the dog didn't always have best friends. In fact, when she lived at the animal shelter, Moki didn't have anyone at all. But then one day, a lady came to visit. She looked at all the dogs in the shelter until she got to the very last one. That was Moki. It was love at first sight. So Moki's new mom brought her home. There was just one problem. <laughs> well, actually two. The guinea pigs. The people at the shelter had told Moki's mom to be careful. 
protect the guinea pigs, they said. Moki's nice to you, but she might not be so nice to those guinea pigs. <laughs> guinea pigs are pretty small, after all. But when Moki met Pandora and Frida, Moki was like, Hi, you're cute. Now what are you? And Pandora was like, I'm a guinea pig. Smell me. Moki wanted to smell them and lick them and lick them some more. So then Moki's mom kept letting the guinea pigs out to play. And Moki was always so sweet and gentle with them. But Pandora and Frida still weren't totally sure about Moki. When they were out of their cage, they'd just kind of freeze. I mean, Moki was a lot bigger than them. But Moki seemed nice for a dog, and the guinea pigs wanted to give her a chance. One day, Moki's mom put the guinea pigs right on Moki's bed. And what did Moki do? She laid right down and snuggled them. Moki liked Pandora and Frida so much, she even started sharing her toys with them. Uh, Moki, I believe that is a little big for guinea pigs. Now these three hang out together all the time, doing all kinds of fun stuff, like rolling on the ground, playing whatever game this is, and being best buds. These three friends learned to trust each other. It didn't happen right away. It took a little bit of time and a few good sniffs. But before they knew it, they were best animal friends. And they always will be. Tiny Squirrel has a big brother. A very big brother. Okay, they weren't born brothers, but they're brothers now. Just look at them play and wrestle. They never hurt each other. Why? Because they're best animal friends. Tommy the Squirrel always wants to play. He follows Jack around doing whatever he does. Their favorite thing is playing hide and seek together outside. Ready or not, here comes Jack. Even when Tommy gets really crazy, Jack is very patient. Tommy was rescued when he was just a tiny baby. This guy found him outside. He saw two gray squirrels chasing a tiny red squirrel. It was poor little Tommy. The man went over and reached out his hand, and Tommy jumped right in. Tommy was scared and very cold, but he started to feel warm and cozy in the man's hands and finally fell asleep. The man noticed that Tommy had trouble getting around. He would run sideways and sometimes even fall down. That's just the way Tommy is. Oh, careful, Tommy. He's still pretty fast, though. Time for a water break. Hey, wait for me. Is that corn on the cob for squirrels? Pretty soon, Tommy met Jack the cat. Jack had been rescued, too. He was a stray looking for a home. Jack is very gentle and he loved his little brother right away. But sometimes things can get a little crazy. Like Tommy will pounce on Jack. And then Jack will wrestle Tommy. But if they play too rough, Tommy will squeak. And then Jack always lets him go. But why are they best friends? Maybe it's because Tommy never gives up. Even when he has trouble sitting on his back legs while he eats, oop, 
see. He doesn't seem to mind. And neither does Jack. These two like each other just the way they are. I guess that's why they're best animal friends. Psst, Tommy, behind you, it's your best friend, Jack. This donkey has a dog. Or this dog has a donkey? Yoda just loves jumping on Lily. And Lily is so easygoing that she doesn't mind at all. A dog, a donkey, best animal friends. Yoda the dog can't get enough of Lily the donkey. He's always jumping on her, pawing at her, and riding on her back. Even when it's time to come inside, Yoda wants to stay outside and sit on his big donkey friend. Giddy up, doggy! And then Yoda's like, let's do it again! Lily was rescued when she was just a few months old. At first, Yoda wasn't sure what she was. A big dog, a tiny horse. But slowly, Yoda realized that what she was, was Nice, fun, and cute. Now Yoda takes care of Lily and tucks her into bed every night. Yoda even protects Lily when she's scared. Get him, Yoda! So how does a dog become best friends with a donkey? Well, Yoda isn't your ordinary dog. Maybe Yoda just likes having a friend who's different from him. And maybe Lily likes having someone to chase. Yoda likes Lily so much that it can be hard to share her. One day, a new donkey came to the farm. Lily kind of liked him. Yoda wasn't too happy about it. He was all, that's my donkey. And he made sure everybody knew it. But after a while, Yoda learned that Lily can have other friends and still be best friends with him. Now they all hang out together, and everybody's happy. Lily and Yoda are best animal friends. Calvin had been alone since he was born. Lincoln could tell he needed a buddy. He just knew. That's what best animal friends are for. Calvin is a little cow. He used to live somewhere where he was all alone. But he was rescued by these nice people and brought to their farm. And you can tell how happy that made him. He's almost flying. And the first day he got to the farm, he met Lincoln. Right away, Lincoln could tell that Calvin needed a friend. But it's not like Lincoln felt sorry for Calvin. He just really liked him. I mean, who wouldn't? Calvin is so cool. And Lincoln's so sweet. He takes care of all the baby animals. Baby lambs, baby goats, tiny kittens, chicks, you name it. Mm. I'm gonna need to see that baby lamb one more time because that was very cute. Yes, cute lamb. Lincoln helped Calvin start to trust the people who rescued him. With Lincoln's help, Calvin didn't feel so shy. Now when he wants to play, he just says so. But guess what? Calvin had never met another cow. He thought he was a dog. Maybe that's why from the moment they met, Calvin did whatever Lincoln did, like following people around everywhere demanding major cuddle sessions, staring through sliding glass doors, and playing like a puppy. So when his parents rescued another cow, Calvin was like, huh? When the two cows first met, Calvin was like, what are you? And Zoe was like, what are you? Because neither one had seen a cow before. Calvin decided to say hi anyway. 
I wonder what's gonna happen. And after that nose boop, they've been friends ever since. Neither Calvin nor Zoe is alone anymore. They have each other. So now Calvin is friends with a cow and a dog. And Lincoln has two cows to protect. He always stands guard to make sure they're okay. All in all, that makes three best animal friends. And one very cute baby lamb. I bet you've never had a turkey steal your toy before. But this dog has. These two are kind of like siblings. Sometimes they cuddle, and sometimes they fight over who gets to play with a stuffed flamingo. Either way, they can't stand to be apart. One's furry, one's feathery, and together, they're best animal friends. Blossom the turkey was rescued when she was only five weeks old. Blossom was all alone, so this lady brought her home where she could take care of her. Yeah. At first, poor Blossom had no idea what was going on and she was a little scared. So Blossom's mom introduced her to Minnow the dog. The first thing Blossom did was sit on Minnow's bed. And Minnow was like, um, excuse me? And that was the start of a beautiful friendship. After a while, Blossom grew up and got more confident. Her mom thought maybe Blossom's ready to move out. She's a turkey and turkeys usually live on the farm and have other turkey friends, right? So Blossom's mom took her to a nice farm, but it actually made Blossom feel lonely and sad. She just stood there, looking around like, where's Minnow? She really missed her best friend. So Blossom's mom decided to bring her back home, where they could watch TV, eat pumpkin pie, and be together forever. Now Minnow and Blossom get to spend every day with each other. They like to do exactly the same things, like go for a swim, walk around the backyard, look for weird bugs, and eat grass. Sometimes they even go for a hike. Mm, maybe that's more like a waddle. When they get home, it's time for a nap. And after that, a sneaky snack. Blossom's like, oh, my burrito. And then Minnow's like, no, 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 my burrito. And Blossom's like, just one more taste. One more, just one more. Every now and then, Blossom needs alone time to lay eggs. It's a hard time for Minnow. She'll try to sit as close as she can to Blossom's nest, even when she can't play. But Blossom always comes back. She'd never forget Minnow. Because a best friend is a best friend. And these two are best animal friends for life. Zach's just a little guy. So how'd he end up with best friends who are giants? There's Maddox, who loves to lick and lick. Then Madison, who's more of the you can ride on my back type. And last but not least, meet Major. Zach loves his pal Major. You wouldn't expect these big dogs and that little squirrel to be so close, but they're basically each other's family. And of course, best animal friends. 
It all started when Zach was rescued after a big hurricane. He was so tiny that his eyes were still closed. Baby squirrels can't open their eyes until they're about a month old. Even though Zach was too little to see, he had it pretty good. He was fed by a specially made bottle. And watching over him night and day were his future best friends, Maddox and Madison. Can you imagine what little Zach thought when he finally opened his eyes and saw these two? He was probably like, why are you licking my head? Soon, Zach realized that licking was Maddox's way of saying hi. It didn't take long before Zach was running the show. He'd jump on everybody. Squirrels are excellent jumpers. The dogs just loved little Zach. And Zach, well, he loved them right back. Hey, look at me, I'm a dog hat. Then one day, Zach looked up and instead of two dogs, there were three. Major was just a puppy. Zach remembered what it was like to be a baby squirrel in a new home. So now it was Zach's turn to welcome a new baby to the family. Since then, Zach's always been there to watch over Major and show him the ropes. Like how to eat nuts at their special spot by the window. Zach will do this thing where he'll crack open a little nut, take a little taste, and then throw the rest on the floor for Major to lick up. It's really weird. Zach shows Major how to dive into the curtains and tries to teach him how to climb. Hey, wait, can dogs even do that? But Zach always comes back down to hang out with his furry friend and to give him a major kiss. These two guys do pretty much everything together now. Major follows him around the house and tries to keep up with Zach, who's like really fast. They chase each other and goof off and sometimes do each other's nails. And watching over always, are the big dogs. Maddox and Madison are right there for their little brothers. That's just how families work. And this animal pack will always be family. And best animal friends. Fuzzy kitten, playing with a cuddly dog. This might just be the cutest thing on the face of the earth. These two love each other so much. They're the most adorable brother and sister. And oh yeah, best animal friends. Honey and Meow met when Honey was just a tiny baby kitten. Honey had been found outside, but was rescued by his new family. At first, Honey thought Meow was a giant mom cat. And he tried to drink milk from her. Meow's like, hey, I'm a dog, not your mom. Even though things got off to kind of a weird start, it didn't take long for Mimi Meow to realize that she loved the little kitten. See, Honey had a hurt tail when he was rescued. And all Mimi Meow wanted was to make him feel better. Now Honey has a cute little nub of a tail. And Mimi Meow made a friend who will never leave her side. You'll find them peekabooing under cozy blankets or jumping on each other's heads. 
They love to play in boxes and adore dressing up in funny outfits. When they're not together, they really miss each other. But they're never apart for too long. Before it's back to drinking out of the same water bowl. And going on fancy dinner dates. Honey is not exactly an indoor cat. So sometimes he leads me meow outside to explore the world. Honey takes them hiking and fishing. Whoa, look at the size of that whopper. But their favorite part about being outside is coming back inside to their cozy house and the family they love. Because it's nice inside. From the time Honey was a little kitten, Mi Meow had a feeling she'd love him forever. She was right. And Honey is so grateful. Because it's not every little cat that gets to have a dog like Mi Meow. Who he knows, down to his whiskers, is his best animal friend. This pup's got a fuzzy little guinea pig shadow who follows her everywhere she goes. And I mean everywhere. Even though he sometimes gets a little too close, this dog and guinea pig are still best animal friends. Meet big sister Pippin and her little brother Frankenstein. From the moment Frank met Pippi, he knew he wanted to be just like her. I mean, look at her. She's the coolest. The closer Frankenstein can be to his big sister Pippin, the happier he is. When he cozies up next to her, he feels warm and safe and loved. So whenever you see Pippin, you know that Frankenstein isn't far behind. He follows her up on the couch, down on the rug, and even outside. But sometimes Frankenstein forgets that he's so much smaller than Pippin. So when he does follow his big sister outside, he has to wear a safety balloon so everyone can see him. I mean, look at that. It is 100% adorable. And he loves it. As long as he can be with Pippin, he's the happiest guinea pig in the world. And even though it can sometimes get a little annoying for Pippin to have her little bro around all the time, can I sniff you? Can I sniff you? Could I please sniff you? <laughs> Pippin wouldn't trade her life with Frankenstein for anything. She's proud to be his sister. And she loves him so much. She gets sad when Frankenstein needs his alone time. And hates it when his door is closed. But they never stay apart for too long. Then it's back to playing the couch game together and eating celery snacks and cuddling. So yes, Pippin has a little guinea pig shadow who follows her wherever she goes. But he's way more than that. He's her little brother <sighs> and her favorite playmate. And she's his big sister. And that's what makes Pippin and Frankenstein best animal friends.
Lando is so excited because his best friend is coming to say hi. His best friend, a rat. Named Michael. Lando is obsessed with Michael. Like, his love for him is on another level. And Michael the rat loves him right back. These two aren't afraid to show everybody that a rat and a dog can be best animal friends. Lando basically behaves like a runaway balloon. He darts around a lot. It's just the way he is. When he was growing up, Lando lived in a few different homes. But then he found a family who was very patient. Lando, good boy. And who loved him for who he is. And, oh yeah, the family had a rat. Who became his brother. No one knew if a dog and a rat were going to get along. So their parents were ready for them to be like, no thanks. But it was a perfect match. I guess Lando and Michael were both looking for a friend. Because when they found each other, they were like, I'm never leaving, I'm staying right here with you forever. Now, they even have their own special way of talking to each other. If Michael is in his cage and Lando wants to play, he shoves his nose in to say, let's hang out. And if Lando is feeling anxious or maybe too excited, Michael can help Lando feel relaxed just by sitting by his side. Hey buddy, let me help you calm down. And he always makes sure that no one bothers him while he's sleeping. It's an easy job. Lando is a very heavy sleeper. But life with Lando isn't sleepy all the time. Not even close. There's a lot of jumping from couch to couch. And playing Find the Rat. Hey, where's Michael? There you are, little buddy. And sometimes they even go on trips. Grand trips. To the Grand Canyon. That's right. Michael and Lando visited the Grand Canyon and had a blast. Think about how many bones I could fit in there. Michael and Lando just get each other. They know when their friend is sad and blue and how a little extra love can make him feel better. They tell each other their secrets and give each other courage to try new things. But mostly, they make each other feel special, the way only best friends do. Who could have guessed that these two, a wild and crazy dog, and a little rat named Michael, would be so close? I guess all it takes is a little trust, a little patience, and a lot of love the secret ingredients for best animal friends. Maggie the dog loves going on adventures. She loves the feeling of the wind on her furry face and exploring secret passages and caves and loves taking long swims in mountain streams. Maggie also loves her best friend Frankie, who's a goat? 
Wait, Frankie is a goat? A goat who rides in a car? Do Frankie and Maggie's parents know about this? They do? Well, I guess that's just the way this family is. A mom, a dad, and a car full of best animal friends. Maggie and Frankie have been traveling together since basically forever. They're always excited to see new places. Whether it's sunny, rainy, windy, or even frozen solid. They'll go on any adventure and sleep almost anywhere, as long as they get to do it together. Maggie and Frankie are both great hikers. Frankie's also an expert climber. She's so brave. Whenever they see a stream to cross, Maggie and Frankie say, no problem. But Maggie's the best swimmer. When she's in the water, nothing can stop her. Frankie's like, if you're swimming, then so am I. Maggie and Frankie have traveled thousands and thousands of miles together. They walk a lot. But mostly, they drive. Their parents' trailer is perfect for long road trips. It's bright, comfy, and has everything a goat and a dog could need. It's colorful, too. Their parents decorated it themselves. Maggie and Frankie love looking at it. And after a long day of crossing bridges, exploring deserts, and running through streams, Maggie and Frankie know that their home on wheels will always be waiting for them. Ever since Frankie was a little baby goat, she had so much energy. She just wanted to explore. But they weren't sure whether she'd like being in a car. Would she sit nicely and quietly? Or stick her head through the roof? But with Maggie by her side, she loved it. As long as Frankie had Maggie, she could ride for miles and miles. Maggie's kind of an old lady. She's seen it all. So she helps Frankie feel relaxed and calm. Frankie looks up to her. Maggie's like, hey Frankie, follow me. And Frankie's like, okay Maggie, anything you say. As Maggie got older, she couldn't hear as well as she could when she was a puppy. Sometimes that happens to old dogs who've seen it all. Luckily, Frankie has a great set of ears. And on one of their hikes, Frankie heard something. Sure enough, Frankie had spotted a mama bear and two of her cubs and wanted to keep Maggie safe. Now, Frankie leads the way whenever they walk outside together. No matter where they go, Maggie and Frankie will always be there for each other, enjoying meals, taking the longest walks ever, snuggling all night long, or getting ready for their next adventure. Their best animal friends forever. This fluffy cow is best friends with a goat. They like to play ball, eat grapes, and get into stuff they're not supposed to.
Um, excuse me, what is happening over there? Well, anyway, they're definitely best animal friends. These two weren't always best friends. When Buckley first came to the farm, he was all alone and only five weeks old. Buckley felt so lonely, sometimes he would even cry. There were a few goats on the farm that Buckley tried to make friends with, but they weren't interested in him. Buckley really needed a friend. So Buckley's owner decided to take a chance on a goat, a little baby named Ralphie. Buckley was excited to meet someone new, but Ralphie was a little scared. For a couple of days, they slept in separate pens. But then one morning, they were found lying side by side. And they've been together ever since. Ralphie helped Buckley feel so much better. Now, he runs around the yard, eats grass, plays soccer, knocks over chairs, and wears hats. In other words, he's happy. Because sometimes you just need somebody who gets you. Not like these goats. They don't get it. You don't have to look the same or be the same size to be friends. You can butt heads and still like each other. But enough about that. It is time for these two to make some mischief. Oh boy. Okay, hello, what are you doing? Excuse me, you two. What are you doing? I just got this, don't eat it. These two have a lot of personality. They love doing everything together. They especially love... Cooking time! Boy, that'll bring you, that brings you running, doesn't it? Come on, let's go in. Here, you can have one. Even though they're growing up fast, they have a special bond that no one can take away. Buckley and Ralphie are forever and ever best animal friends. Um, Lola, did you just sit on Pepper? Excuse me, could you please move over a little bit? You are on my face. That's better. These two are kind of like sisters. A big bunny sister and a little dog sister. In other words, they're best animal friends. Pepper is your classic big bunny sister. She always has to be first up the stairs. And she needs her blankets to be just right. Hey, this wrinkle is supposed to be over there. The first time she met Lola, she just decided that they were gonna be best friends without even asking. She was like, hey, guess what, little sister? We're best friends now. And Lola was like, okay, I like your ears. Soon, Pepper showed Lola all her favorite games. Like exploring outside, and hide and go seek. Gotcha. And running upstairs, and eating paper. And with Lola's help, they even invented some new games together, like the bouncy game. And this, I'm not sure what you would call this. When they get tired of playing, they take breaks for baths, and naps. So many naps. These two do pretty much everything together now. And even when Pepper acts like a bossy big sister. Hey Lola, follow me. Lola doesn't seem to mind. 
she looks up to Pepper and loves her with her whole dog heart. But one day, Lola didn't feel like playing. She was sick and didn't want to climb up the stairs or explore outside. But Pepper was like, don't worry, Lola. I'll stay right by your side until you feel better. So she snuggled up to Lola and gave her kisses with her tiny twitching nose. Hey, Pepper, that tickles. Until Lola felt better. And then she gave Pepper a giant hug to thank her for being such a good sister. Then they were back to going on adventures and getting into trouble. Because whether these two are playing bounce, 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 or just taking a quiet nap, they always have each other's backs. That's what sisters are for and why they'll always be best animal friends. This is Dill. And this is his best friend, Pickles. They're both small dogs who love doing dog things like rolling in the dirt and... Hey! Wait a minute. Pickles isn't a dog. Pickles is a pig. What is a pig doing taking a bath with a dog? Does Dill know that Pickles isn't a dog? Come to think of it, does Pickles know Pickles isn't a dog? <laughs> they don't care who's what, huh? They're happy as long as they're together. I guess that's what makes them best animal friends. Since the day they met, Pickles and Dill have been obsessed with each other. They hang out all the time. They destroy the house together. You guys, who did this? Hmm? Did you do this? They lick dishes in the dishwasher together. They take baths. And go to the beach. Together. At the end of the day, they love to get into bed and warm their little bodies under the same blanket. But they weren't always together. Pickles used to be the only animal in the family. He loved being alone. He got all of the pets, and he didn't have to share with anybody. But then one day, he got sick. So many people helped him feel better. His parents, the vet, a police officer. They gave him so much love and special care. And pretty soon, he was healthy again. He was happy that he felt better. But he sort of missed having company all the time. He was like, maybe having a friend to cuddle with isn't so bad. So Pickles' parents introduced him to little baby Dill. Dill was so small and super curious. Dill was like, hey, what kind of dog are you? And Pickles was like, I don't know, what kind of dog are you? But soon, Pickles and Dill realized that it didn't matter what kind of dogs they were, or even what kind of animals they were. As long as they get to go on walks together, and swim in little pools, and eat dinner side by side. Dill's like, hey Pickles, if you have any extra vegetables, could you give them to me? And Pickles is like, all yours. Now Pickles and Dill spend their whole lives doing best friend things together. 
They like their exercise classes where they jump over hurdles, crawl through tubes, and run around like a bunch of hooligans. Those dogs are really impressed. Sometimes dill and pickles make a big mess. Pickles will dig and crawl under things, and dill will chew them up. Partners in crime, and best friends for life. But no one can be mad at them for very long. So whether they're getting some exercise, taking a long rest, making a mess, or cleaning up, Pickles and Dill are forever friends. A dog and a pig, so happy together. Elmo and Emma. Emma and Elmo. You almost never see this little cat without her dog buddy. They're so close. They even drink out of the same water glass. But they weren't always this way. Can you believe that Elmo used to run away and hide from Emma? But that was before they discovered just how much they love each other. And before they became best animal friends. When Elmo's moms first brought him home, he was a nervous little kitten. He wasn't used to living with a dog. So even though his family loved him so much, Elmo liked to spend his days alone. And that meant staying away from Emma. Elmo and Emma's moms really wanted them to get along. But Elmo did not want to be friends. So you can imagine how surprised everybody was when Elmo and Emma secretly started hanging out. They'd sneak around to meet up under a table, in the hallway, or in Emma's playroom. It was like they didn't want their moms to know how much they were starting to love each other. It was their little doggy cat secret. But the secret couldn't stay a secret for long. Because Elmo and Emma's love for each other was just too big to hide. It melted everybody's hearts to see them together. Elmo, who used to be so nervous, never wanted to leave Emma's side now. Emma had helped him become his true, playful, rambunctious, and happy self. If Emma's on the move, so is Elmo. He just does everything she does. Maybe he thinks he is a dog. He even takes cat naps in Emma's doggy bed. But Emma doesn't mind. She's just so happy to have Elmo as a friend. A friend who loves being chased and hugged and loved. Emma's friendship helped Elmo become his best self. That's what friendship's all about. Elmo and Emma, Emma and Elmo, best animal friends. At first, George the dog was truly confused by this little pink blob. 
He was like, are you a pillow with legs? Or a pink puppy? She's a piglet, George. And her name is Debbie. Even though he'd never seen a pig before, George knew right away that he really liked Debbie. No matter what she was. And she liked him right back. Now they're obsessed with each other. And of course, best animal friends. When Debbie arrived, she was a teeny tiny little pig. But George didn't see her that way. He was just kind of like, oh, a baby, I'm all right. George knew that the little baby needed love and kisses and to snuggle up in the warm, cozy fur of a big brother. So that's what he became. Debbie loved having big brother George around. He was so calm and steady. He made her feel so safe. George was also the perfect pig-sized mountain to climb. And he'd keep an eye on Debbie when she went zipping around the yard. And then, when she'd least expect it, he'd chase right after her. Ooh, I'm gonna get you, you pink pillow. And George loved spending time with his little sister, Debbie. Even when she stopped being little. She is so big now. But George still looks after her. Because once you're a big brother, you're always a big brother. It doesn't matter how gigantic your little sister gets, or whether or not she's a pig. George is there for Debbie no matter what. For chase time, or nap time, even side-by-side -side time. He's the best big brother a pig of any size could ask for. These lucky ducks have the best mom. A dog named the dude. They're a dog-duck family. And of course, best animal friends. Meet the dude and his ducklings. Marge, Dot, and Francis. They're an animal pack that can't stand to be apart. The dude saw the ducklings for the first time when they were only one day old. He was like, what are these alien creatures? And the ducks were like, mom? <laughs> Soon after that, the ducks were following the dude everywhere and using him as a cozy nest. They couldn't get enough of him. The dude was very patient. He's a good boy. And he sort of liked being mom. He even gave Marge, Dot, and Francis their first swim lesson. Now that the ducks are older, this family is closer than ever. There are a lot of hugs and tasty treats. Their favorite? Green peas. The dude always lets the ducks eat first. Delish. And family games, like follow the fuzzy dude. And climb on the fuzzy dude. And also give back scratches to the fuzzy dude. Oh yeah, that feels good. The only thing this family can't do is play the dude's favorite game. Catch. Dot tries to play, but it's very difficult to throw a ball with duck wings. 
the dude doesn't mind. Even a dog mom needs some alone time. Sometimes Marge, Dot, and Francis like to spread their wings and get sassy with the dude. They argue, squawk, and even peck. But they always make up after play fights. Marge, Dot, and Francis are getting big and don't need as much special care and attention anymore. But they'll always be babies to the dude. He protects them and is always there to guide them through the woods. The ducks love him so much. These four stick together like family because they are family and best animal friends. Like, comment, and subscribe.